In this concept, we are going to learn about a new idea called Cartesian product of sets. Okay. Now, in order to do that, we need to define one more term, which is called an ordered pair. It's a very easy idea. It says ordered pair. Pair means two elements. So, an ordered pair is a pair of elements denoted using um, round brackets. So, for example, A comma B. So, this is treated as an element of a set. Okay. For example, if I say 2 comma 5 is an ordered pair, right? And let's say a set A has 2 comma 5 as an element and 1 comma 3 as an element, etc. Now, this is a new kind of element because 2 and 5 don't belong to A. So, 2 belongs to A is wrong. So, 2 does not belong to A. 5 also does not belong to A. But this new element 2 comma 5 belongs to A. Similarly, 1 comma 3 as an element belongs to A. But because it is ordered, we can say 5 comma 2 does not belong to A. So, if you swap the A and B, then the element changes, right? So, it's a new kind of entity, right, where we have two elements which together form a pair. Now, these two can be numbers, but they can also be letters or some other objects. But the point here is the pair is treated as one element and it's uh, it is denoted by round brackets, right? Please understand, we have also learnt in sets that intervals of real numbers can be denoted by round brackets or square brackets. For example, 2 comma 3 is open interval from 2 to 3. So, 2 less than x less than 3 and 2 comma 3 square brackets means both 2 and 3 are included. So, suppose I say x equals x equals. Now, this notation therefore is a little confusing. If I say 2 comma 3, it represents all real numbers from 2 till 3, both endpoints not included. But if I say an ordered pair 2 comma 5, it is just one pair, okay, which contains the two elements 2 and 5. Now, if the same notation is used, how do we know which one we are referring to? Well, we will decide that based on the context. If you are talking of a set of real numbers, then the interval idea will make sense. If you are talking of one element in a set, then especially like this, then this is like a ordered pair. So, this is just something that we have to get used to by practice, right? It's a very simple idea, but one important thing is if an ordered pair A comma B equals another ordered pair C comma D, then we can say A equals C and B equals D. The first element has to be equal and the second element also has to be equal. Now, why did we learn about ordered pairs? Because ordered pairs are an important part of what we call as the Cartesian product of sets. Now, what is the Cartesian product. Suppose I say let set A is uh, let's say A C E okay and let set B be let's say 2 comma 5 okay. Uh, I used 2 comma 5 here so let me just use 2 comma 3 just to make it different. Now the Cartesian product of the sets A and B is denoted by A cross B, okay? Now, it's like A into B, but we are not actually going to multiply. How can you multiply sets, right? It's not like numbers, but we use that symbol just to say that this is product. So, how is this product defined? Well, the first thing is, is a set, okay? So, A is a set, B is a set, a cross B is also a set. But what set is that? Well, it is the set that consists of all possible 
ordered pass a comma b such that a belongs to set a and b belongs to set b what we are going to do is we are going to create ordered pass from the set a and b and say that those are all part of a cross b so it's very simple a cross b is a set that contains ordered pass so set means okay we will start with curly brackets all the ordered pass now a comma b such that a belongs to first set b belongs to second set so small a comma 2 next we can say a comma 3 just like a comma 2 then we have c comma 2 so we simply write all the possible combinations c comma 3 e comma 2 e comma 3 every possible ordered pair such that first element is in set A and second element is in set B is part of A cross B. Now it is quite straightforward to see that if A has 3 elements and B has 2 elements, A cross B has 3 times 2. Why? Because for every possible first element here, you can have two first, two second elements here. So the total number will be 3 times 2 which is what we are saying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, n of a cross b equals n of a times n of b. The number of elements in a cross b is the product of the number of elements in a times the number of elements in b. Now, we have seen how to define a cross b when a and b are two sets. Now, we can extend this idea just like ordered pair, we can also have an ordered triplet okay, and define an idea called A cross B cross C which means it will be an ordered triplet where elements will be of the form small a small b small c where small a belongs to like this right and one other idea is you can also define a cross product or Cartesian product of A cross A. So, for example, suppose I define a new set D called A cross A. A cross A is a new set and A cross A has nothing to do with set A itself because A cross A will only have ordered pairs. Set A will have individual elements like A, B, C or 1, 2, 3. A cross A will have only ordered pairs. So, just like A cross B, we can also do a cross a but here of course a cross a is the same as a cross a but if you take a cross b it is not the same as b cross a the cartesian product is not commutative because this will have ordered pairs a comma b whereas this will have ordered pairs b comma a unless the set a and set b are exactly equal this will not be true in general. So, these are all some of the ideas related to the Cartesian product of sets.